Vintage J7800. Vintage J7800. Look at that bad boy. 1982. What beverage are you about to consume before you embark into your toilet recording door J fiasco? Monster Espresso. Fucking bring that shit in your mouth. That's the way forward. Creamy Tastes like alcoholic coffee. petrol coffee. Open it up, I was like... <laughs> oh. But it's got... Um, <laughs> Fizzy coffee. I think that's the sound of joy, mate. <laughs> it's got more ingredients than a McDonald's burger. That's incredible. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, I need to work out how to... To be fair, it's Dave's two favourite things. Yeah. It's a pretty ingenious contraption, to be fair. What, what is it? What was it for? So you can mount two mics on one stand. And that is literally... What, what are you making? That's literally like... Ambient mics. Seven miles yeah, they are very small. Yeah. Uh, it's just pads. So like minus 10 decibels, 20 decibels, and then you got flat or 75 uh, roll off, or 150 roll off. So I've got them, everything just set flat for now. To the stone that stands strong, stronger than all, all the boys left to give because we grow tired of the time wasted by man, wasted by all his idle hands. <laughs> A little bit tight and space there, mate. <laughs> just, a, just a little bit. That's your sink, in case you need a sink in your studio. Because water is always a good thing to have around. Around Many musical. electronics and also... I think so. Why don't we give them a guided tour? So what's oh, this HR4 then? Uh, that's the headphone amp. Nice. So it uh, basically splits the signal up so I can give everyone different mixes. That's a laptop. It is. Running Logic Pro 9. Lots of cables. Going in there, yeah. audio interface. Yeah. What interface are we using? Tascam? Yeah, US 16 yeah. for one. It's not the one that I use in my mix yeah, yeah, yeah. for input. It's pretty good. And then this is your fabled board of doom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's pretty old and thus breaks. Have a keyring. Oh, sick. Have a keyring. Thanks. Have a keyring. On eBay. Really? Eleven $1 hundred on eBay. That's what you pay. No, two grand normally. Yeah. Wow. Because it's it's the yeah it's handmade custom shop. Wow. Have you seen the next one? Well, no. I I used to I used to own a really. You love that, don't you, mate? I I really love That's it. That's your favourite part. Fantastic. I've got a new drum kit. Like to see my trash stack. So this is my friend Sam, <laughs> and he's letting us record in this facility here. Um, and um, can I tell them where we are? Yes, of course you can. We're at Game Gears. Yeah. Uh, they sell uh, games, t-shirts, gadgets. Uh, they don't sell gears. And we like guitars as well. He's a guitar fan. And um, I knew what guitar it was going to be before it came out of the case, which is really, really random. I had like guitar ESP. And the reason is, I had one of these. You certainly did. But do you know what I did with it? What? I took it to... Did you burn it? <laughs> oh, I really wanted to, but I didn't. I took it to Night Guitars, and uh, Rob there is a fantastic guy. Um, so is his dad, actually. And they made the whole thing black, all black out, apart from white knobs, because they couldn't find black ones with the S-switch. And then they scalloped the board, and they put a brass nut in it, oh, right, and okay. basically Yngwie it for my Yngwie session work. Um, and it was a stunning guitar, and I sold it to a friend of mine. Wow. That's a well, great mine, guitar. Well, mine is better because it's got all this gunge and dirt on it. Well, that makes it better. It. Yeah, it makes actually, it better. it's shiny clean, mate, so you're, you're lying. T turn it over, I want to show them the, the ass. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. That's a nice looking fender strap. Let me lie in the car. Figure out, Polo. It's really hard to play like this. If I put the strap on. <laughs> That looks a lot better, mate. plays bass up here. Right, Dave. Whilst we're getting 
sorting this out. Do you want to play out here? And I'll sort out stuff. What in? And I went to work in. Did you just take a piss in the studio? Just, just uh, take a piss in the studio. Just testing the set of the acoustics of the room, really. It's the, when you get the splash back, it's the sort of 10k frequencies that Dave's focusing on. So he asked me to sound check it and luckily I'm in zero. <laughs> Do you want me to shut you in there? Get in the toilet. You're all good then. Yeah, can we just groove something just for four bars so I can hear the, hear the uh, levels? Ridiculous, yeah, man. We've got, we've got Ridiculous. <laughs> How does it feel, mate? How does it feel? Good. Hey, do you reckon we should use that? Do you want some more caffeine? No. Do you want? Do you want what's really awesome? What? Your face at the breakdown. Really? Yeah, it's <laughs> fucking awesome, mate. It's like you're going to battle. <laughs> Suggestion. Why don't we, in the middle section, take a new drum, a snare drum, maybe, and like lo-fi it, and then add a ring modulator to your guitar, and then do that so it's almost like a lo-fi midsection part. Yeah, that's a wicked idea. Where do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone tell Dave to shut up and get in the toilet. Dave, 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 shut up and come with me in the toilet. Because <laughs> that's what has to happen. I... I feel like I'm being abused. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> the magic happen. It's fucking amazing, mate. Thank you so much. Right. Oh, you don't drink? No, I don't, I don't take no bovine mammary fluid. That's okay. Oh, that's fucking amazing. Any good? That's fucking incredible. What the fuck is that? It's a cold coffee, Greek style, because this man makes fucking amazing cold coffees. That looks fucking sick. It's hench as fuck, have a sip. Uh, right, how much no. is that down by? Yeah, it's at 96 ppm. Wow. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it feels really good, mate. You're happy. Yes, we're happy. I'm happy, Ben. Excellent. I think you've done a good job. Two week, take one. Oh, that's that's
That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just try it. Let's go for a take. <laughs> Yeah, it is well too fast. Ben, that's too fast. <laughs> Guys, <Whoa>. it's too fast. <laughs> I think we're done. I think we're done, buddy. I think I pretty much um, beast still it. Need to... Dave, mm -hmm. what we've got to do is record some samples for the phase reimbursement. <laughs> you are a complete <laughs> 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 This is Dave. Dave, don't forget to get some samples for uh, <laughs> for the for the phase because you if you want to. What, what is it? Explain to me why. Well, when you me that... when you um, if you want to correct any phase alignment issues, <laughs> what what you could do is you could get some samples, <laughs> the drums, and you could you could add them in. <laughs> To make more phase. Sample, you mean, you mean to sample augment the drum hits? That's so, what, what so I was so trying to tell you that. So that their phase is reinforced. Yeah. I didn't want to confuse the issue though for you. <laughs> because you know. Didn't want to confuse Don't day. want to confuse the issue. I want to introduce, and I'm quite excited about this opportunity, for people to actually possess and own one of Rabia's very own thumb afros. <laughs> it's a thumb fro. A thumb fro. Reasonably priced. Limited edition set of 99 going at 99 pounds each, which I think is realistic and watch they come with an action If you press the button on the back of the fro Built-in monophonic two-week ringtone <laughs> Hi, it's Rob Chapman from Door J. We're tracking some tunes here in Pocket Studio. Uh, Dave Hollingworth is doing, the wonderful Dave, is doing the engineering and producing for us because he's very, very good actually. And uh, we're just getting ready to track some guitars. Rabia's has walked in with a stein of coffee. It's a fucking stein. <laughs> stein as fuck. <laughs> stein as fuck. And this is um, some of the gear we're going to be using. I'll start at the bottom. Got ahead. JVM 410, that's Beers, baby. JCM 800 2203. Coolidge Outlander from the amazing Mr. Coolidge. Orange Dark Terror, Black Star HT1. Silverback by an as yet undisclosed brand. Line 6 DT25. Dave, did we bring enough amplifiers? No. Why don't you show me your igloo? Set a cab here, and then get another one of these and put it this way to enclose the cab and the mic stands, and then throw shitloads of duvets and stuff over the top. Mm. And uh, that'll keep it nice and isolated, quiet, dry, and also the these will stop the mic stands from getting. I think a lot of people are going to be very surprised at what kind of quality recording you can produce with the right amount of dreadlock <laughs> and some air uh, hangers. This is honestly one of the best studio investments ever. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> what image is your silver sort of like? 16. 16. We're going to try a few things out. Um, the mic that's going to be certainly used is... A short SM7, which is oh. a large diaphragm dynamic. Sounds fat, basically. It sounds fat. It sounds fat. fat. Most things. Yeah, yeah. pretty much do anything, and it sounds awesome. Mm. And what are these so, random colourful ones on top of my DT25? Um, this one is a uh, 606 Sennheiser. Uh, kind of a medium-sized dynamic. A bit like a SM57, but a little bit wider mm. frequency response. Um, and then this is a cardinal, cardinal EV cardinal, which is a cardioid. Um, is this a no? It's a hypercardioid, I think, which is cool. Nice. This one mm. will sound bright. That one will sound midi, and this one will sound everything. What what kind of hertz would that would that one be? Kind of a. Uh. <laughs> this is this. What's the frequency response for this? Yeah, I think it's about fifty hertz to twenty kilohertz. Mm. TLA, great. This is an EQ, and this is a compressor. So how did you learn about your... Who's phoning, who's phoning you? David Wiley, 
Ha ha, I love everything about this. <laughs> Is that Scottish Dave? Yeah. Yay! See you YouTube freaks! <laughs> you wee troll bastards! I love you as well! So how did you learn about recording mate? Because you're quite knowledgeable about it. How did I learn about yeah. it? Well, Dave... Me and Dave, like Dave obviously always knew a lot more about it because he was more interested about it than I was. But when we, when we first did an EP like back in 2008 and he'd just got the new Logic and he hadn't been mixing and producing for years, it was both of us were kind of like, this is the start of it all. So we kind of yeah. learned it together and then obviously Dave took off and became sick and I just, I just learned what I need to know. But Dave's another level. It was interesting watching you setting up the drum kit as well. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm the only guy in Dorje that can't play drums. <laughs> well, can't play drums. no, it's it's good. I I can do enough, I think, to survive in a studio by myself now, and record a band. That's fucking produce, awesome. Produce it and stuff. So really awesome. Yeah, but this is great. It's great having this in the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just like oh, I need to go and do some mixing. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, you guys just missed for beer, dangling over the edge of a couch, pushing a cable through a wall. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That was um, well, it was pyrotechnic, but I've obviously um, just come in on the side, a bit of fro tech. Fro tech. <laughs> <laughs> it's another useful tip for um, people with iPhones. So oh mate, stick, stick your torch on and then just sit do that. There. Do that again. So you, you set the torch. Oh, yeah. I see. So let's go with that. Yeah, get the torch out and stick it up against the. Oh, so now you mesh. can see into the grill. Yeah. That's the speaker, fucking so you can see pirate tech as fuck! With this mic, I don't know whether you can see the capsule or not. The capsule is quite far down. Yeah. Uh, so, to make sure it's in phase, I need to make sure this is about the same distance away. For anyone not knowing what phase is, it's making sure that the sound waves hit at the same time. Because mm. you get cancellation. Mm. This cab has seen a bit of action. It has. So you made your tramp's cabin. Yeah. <laughs> Are these a specific kind of blanket, Dave? Uh, it's packing blankets from eBay. Did you purchase these exactly for this point? Yeah. You really did, didn't you? Yeah. Got 50 of them. <laughs> really? Yeah. Hench as fuck, About, mate. I don't know, 30 quid or something. And then like, six pounds for a clothes horse. ISO booth. ISO booth as fuck. So how, how much quieter will this be? It'll be a lot quieter. Wow. Job done. We were lost for that Yeah, that's maybe, maybe a little bit too much. We are double tracking the guitars. We've already laid down a thick wedge of evil. And now we're using Silverback on channel one for the second track. I'm using the Hoofschmied Arbino Droid. On, it's got a Kent Armstrong humbucker. Sounds really, really nice. Sounds like this. Okay. Rob's main track is going to be on the uh, right side, and that's going to be his full hell bent, pain. saturated, pain <laughs> yeah. channel side. And uh, then on the opposing side, we're going to have a desaturated version of his hellbite tone. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we're going to sort of then have a third track of almost bass playing, just single string stuff, just to beef it out. And then we'll do the exact same thing with beer, but on the opposite side. So beer's main sound will be on the left hand side and then desaturated on the right hand side. And, and that's going to mimic the way we stand on stage, isn't it? Because yeah. Um, I have beer to my right on stage, which would appear to the left and the speakers. Yes. Yes. That's how it works, kids. Um, <laughs> and that's, that's going to make a very full, thick, yeah, yeah. but clear tone. The evil settings of motherfuckness. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice tuner. It's in. Who'd you get it from? It's from Planet Waves and Dudario. 
Planet Waves. Lovely in? Elaine at Planet Waves. She's that one, the nicest northern lady I've ever met, apart from uh, Ben's sister. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Without this recording, it wouldn't be possible. With good tuning. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. That's actually a good point. We're cutting an EP and we're using a Planet Waves headstock chromatic tuner. Because they're fucking sick. They are fucking sick. And then we're using Planet Waves American Stage Jack Leads. Yeah. Do Dario strings. This is a 10 set and this is a 56 gauge because I'm tuned to drop C sharp. Yeah. This is a hair tie, keeping my, so that I don't try and change, because I, I change pickups all the time when I'm playing, because I like different tones, and what I want is consistency with the tone, so I've, I've handicapped myself, so I can't just <laughs> instinctively change pickups, that's the secret. And I've got another one here um, that I've done wrong, it should be on top of the strings, preventing it from ringing. <laughs> but it's still, but uh, when I strung it, I forgot. But I'm liking the tone of this this headband in this particular area here, so we're keeping that there. Okay, so this is take one silverback. Take one silverback, clean channel. Aromancy. Hoofschmied albino droid aromancy. Go. <laughs> Matt Hornby, Chapman Guitars Artist Development and Pocket Management Consultant. Five that shit. Hi, man. Hey, man. Many high fives. That's right. How's it going, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, it's so like fucking hot, isn't it? It's fucking boiling. It's really, really hot. Surprisingly, he's <clears throat> the DT25 um, Class A Pentode. Lots of volume and hardly any drive. Just as a thickener so that it. Um, Sounded thick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what we're going to play you now is the breakdown part. So there are three guitars here. There's a, a crunchy, driven tone, a thick, fat, kind of almost like a 5150 kind of tone, almost played like a bass guitar, and then a much cleaner, crisper, plexi type tone. We're going to play all three together so you can hear Chappers times three doing uh, breakdowns. And, and what you can do is. Do you want bass or not? Add the, uh, no bass, just guitars and drums. Take the thickener out, put the thickener in. We'll see if it comes through on the camera, Mike. Okay. So uh, we'll start with the thickener on and then when I do that it'll go off and 
on, off, on, off. <laughs> do it, buddy, do so it. You got the, the, the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? That sounds really good, mate. Sounds really, yeah. really good. Yeah. Sum it up in one more beer. Fuck. <laughs> I go to that another two no, times. That was only yeah, but that only took half an hour. Really? I only took half an hour. Felt like fucking four hours. I didn't asked it? you. I asked you at se uh, half seven. Just gone half seven. Yeah. Whether you could do the three tracks in, in, two, in, in two, two hours. hours. Okay. All right. We're on. We're on. <laughs> Guitar sessions with Dave and Beer. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not quite as apt as, as rope shit as oh well. So we should probably just say that we decided that um, I just wanted to go for it with the guitar tracks and because I was getting p impatient about not being able to hear the songs with like all the guitars, me and Dave decided to get up extra early before Rob comes in and does vocals to do all my guitars. So I'm hardcore. And so far you've done it in one or two takes for every everything yeah which is good nice but you did just fuck up yeah I certainly did <laughs> so let's, let's try it again I do this because it makes it nice to play and like you put new strings on even though these strings are about a month old but you know because you can some of us can't afford strings <laughs> now there is a product by a brand called Planet Waves and Adaria which, and it, which is better than fast fret called XLR8 Actually, if you set it together, it means accelerate. Oh, right, alright. And uh, I use that, it's really good. Yeah, I should. I didn't know they did it. I've been using GHS Fast Fret, but I'll probably get some of that shit. 
Why well, um, don't you tell the ladies and gentlemen what amplification you're using for this particular part of your recording? This particular part is the first riff that you hear in Aeromancy, which is the sort of pushed clean riff, but an octave higher than it is when you when we kick in. And that I'm using the Line 6 uh, DT25. Thank you very much, Line 6. It's a nice, I, very, I like this one very much. It makes a very good stand for, for ice lattes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's got a place, Matt, provided. But. Um, it's just great the amount you can do with it, but basically, as you can see, Pentode Class A. Uh, oh, stage he's on the third, three. third stage. Yeah, that's interesting. And um, yeah, those are settings, magical settings. So you're using Class A chime, which is basically a Vox AC30. Yeah, and then the idea behind that is that out of the amp, it flies down this magical tube <laughs> <laughs> that ends up going into the Boss Line Selector. And Dave's that's, that's unfortunately not, covered up the model how, number. That's not actually how, it, how it's wired. Is it not? No. Why? Because it comes out of this magical cable. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> goes into here, and yeah. then that cable goes up to. All oh, right. Here, okay. So the hole. Uh, and then behind here comes out of here, and then into there. Into the first DD6 the DD6 six. by Boss. That's the first delay pedal I bought. It's really nice. It's really good. And then so that, that's that's the, in the effects loop of the uh, line six. Yep. And then that's going out to what cab? That's going out to my Marshall uh, JCM nine hundred cab. Yeah. Nice. Nineteen sixty lead is it JCM nine hundred? Uh, and then how's it going into the backstop? Well, the guitar hits the line selector, and then the line selector splits the signal into two, one going off to the um, line six, and the right. other one to the black star. And then Are you the, taking a line out from the black star? And then the emulated out line out really? from the black star is running into the delay so that it's behind the amp <laughs> instead of in front of it. And then that runs over onto the patch bay, which then feeds up to the first channel of the mixing desk, which then goes back to the patch bay, and then down to the audio interface, and then into this box. And then that runs into our ears. And then it sounds like this. Beer. <laughs> Sounds very, very nice. It sounds and airy. The, 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 the cheeky bit is then panning the two amps. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, we got one left and one right. Line 6 is on the left and the black star is on the right. And it's that stereo delay image and it's great and it sounds awesome. Fucking amazing. And what we've decided to do is give it more gain than it needs so that when you roll it off, it sounds a bit cleaner, a bit glassier. But when it's on full, it's like. It's not quite thick, but you roll it off a bit. And Today, yeah. So, yeah. so that's how we're going to record the intro. I can hear myself good. I need more uh, of the mix in my cans. Leave me alone, Johnny. We can't all be into the same thing. Life's like a variety bucket. Should we go uh, take our pencil? I came from the song. We were lost. Forgot all, but found our way back to hear you say. Hey, romance, we were blown, now we see. When you crawl away. That's the price you pay. <laughs> Not Northern era, Northern Dorje, Norje. When you fall away. <laughs> I'll do. I'll do two clean, two dirty, 
one crazy, all sorts of it, and then one falsetto all the way through. Do you want to do in the bit the breakdown some bluesy? I have. All right, okay. Yeah, I'm already on that mother. Oh, that good. You know, for the last bit, you know, yeah. aromance. Could you do uh, aromance? Mansi and launch aromance. Let me record that little bit now, so I've got it. If down. you if you go for more of an A sound on the C, hey. then you can do more dirt with the aromance. Uh, I'll record it as a little reminder, and then I'll do um, so because I'm gonna I'm gonna cornell the shit out of that bit. Aromancy, aromancy. Does it sound good in your headphones? Fuck, immense, mate. It sounds fucking immense. <laughs> it sounds like God is angry with my ears in a good way. <laughs> when you crawl away, aromancy. Fucking owned it. Thanks, man. Right, falsetto, track that motherfucker up. Okay. Uh, the, if you're bending on the on the A, which is 14 fret G string. So that's there, and you want to get the vibrato at the top of the bend. You want to have three three fingers. So if my ring finger is on the 14th fret G string, then I want my middle finger to be on the 13th fret G string, and my index finger to be on the 12th fret G string, so that you're getting three fingers worth of support when you're trying to bend. Ah. <laughs> Quite early. I got here at 12 and I said to the guys, I think I'm gonna have to open the door and prize Dave away from the desk because I thought you were still in there. Um, <laughs> uh, it's time to actually redo the bass. We recorded the uh, the bass when uh, Ben tracked his drums um, live and we left that in as a kind of guide track. Um, and now I'm gonna replace that with uh, full fat. Tone. Full fat tone. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Rob were just discussing how we're going to record it, and um, I was saying that it's quite nice to record a, a speaker cabinet because you get the, the microphone picks up sort of this air um, movement, I guess, from the from the speaker itself, which is really cool. However, I won't be doing that. <laughs> Mainly because the DI on the back of my amp is the best DI I've ever heard. Of any, like, not just bass DI, just generally DI. What amp have you got? It's a uh, Tech 21 Landmark 300. Um, and the DI is a Sans amp, which mm. some people may have heard of, the Sans amp bass drivers. Mm. Um, so it's got one of those built into it. But the amp is also made by the same guys as Sans amp, so it's like this perfect win. Nice. It's fucking awesome, man. Um, this is a really old uh, Watkins copycat tape delay unit. We're going to create some cool effects with it. Nice. Uh, I'm going to patch some stuff, some, some recorded stuff. How old is that tape? How old is the actual tape itself? Yeah, yeah. I think it's about three months old. <laughs> Sounds a bit off, so I've got some replacements. Proper fucking scary shit. <laughs> And we're 
also going to play around oh, yes. with a pedal that a nice guy from my forum sent through. It was a project at school. And what I was saying about this pedal is that... It's fucked. Well, it's got, <laughs> it's got paper names for everything. All of the controls are backwards. The input's actually the output, and this on-off switch wobbles. And if you turn it over, it's called... Let me try and get it in the light and see if you can see it. He's carved fuzz fuck into it. But it's the goddamn best fuzz pedal I've, I think I've ever heard in my life. And uh, Dave was after a fuzz tone, so I just thought, you know what? Yeah. He needs the fuzz fuck, which is currently what's happened to my hair. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? There and Dave, studio, vlog, DJ, diary thing. We're about to do the acoustic guitar. And we're rocking headphones. Yeah, we are. Bear, dynamic, <laughs> DT. Bread is. The nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the acoustic guitar parts for Aromancy. I'm using the Faith. Venus high gloss guitar that I got from Faith Guitars. It's fucking awesome. Um, so we're putting it on there to just brighten out the chorus a bit, make it a bit more epic sounding. So yeah, that's it. Let's, let's go. do it. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> cool. That, that was fucking sick.